So this is part two of Play Dead to Get Ahead My Ass because my video had cut off. And um, yeah, I just finished watching part one. Sometimes I don't watch my videos, but that's neither here nor there. Part two, let's get into it. Okay, so I left off where I was talking about how I kind of gave a little brief background of my family history. Um, saying I came from a family of sharecroppers. This is my maternal side of the family, um, where my grandmother and grandfather could not read or write, do math. They basically lived on a uh, property of white people, working the land, agriculture, to, you know, um, as a means of survival. So they couldn't read or write. And um, not to mention that my grandparents was like the first generation out of slavery, okay? Um, my grandmother and grandfather was born in the early 1900s, but um, my mother, she was one out of 14 children. She was the first and only to receive a degree, a college degree, and her degree is in early childhood. Uh, with that being said, education was um, top priority in our family. Um, when she passed that on to me, I, I recap that in the fifth grade, my mom wrote me a rap song about education. And um, with that rap song, I rapped it in, in school at like an assembly. Somebody went and recorded it and remixed it and tried to take credits for it. But my mom, one day I'll get on camera and do it, but not now. But the point is, my mom was that serious about her education. And not only did she encourage us, but she also set an example um, by going back to school. Like, I remember when we were in grade school, she got her GED, but she didn't stop there. She went to school for early childhood. Um, she graduated around roughly like 96, 97. And that was when my daughter was born. I graduated from high school um, the same year I was pregnant with my daughter. So I guess I was carrying my fun fact with every child that I um, birthed, I was in school. I carried them in my womb while I was in school. My first child, high school. My second child, um, medical assistant and in, <clears throat> in my third child, I was taking my college credits and courses for, um, the nursing program, which I have yet to get my nursing degree. But as it stands for me, um, I am a nationally certified medical assistant. Um, I'm also a certified nurse, a one and a certified nurse, a two, I have my um, medication aid as well as my medication technician certification uh, from the state of North Carolina. And um, I'm also BLS certified. Um, and I am continuing my education in healthcare. So uh, I have a, 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 a graduate. My oldest child, she graduated from high school in 2017, which I'm very proud of her. And then I have two um, school-aged children. So that's a brief background on my education. And now I'm going to go ahead and finish part two, going into the workforce and how, you know, things from the things that I was taught from, you know, I guess my ancestors passed down to my mother, passed down to me. Um, certain work ethics, okay? One thing that I can say about the people in my family, like I, my mother and my aunties and uncles, they are in their 60s and, and above. And they're still working because that's how seriously, you know, work ethics were instilled into them so i was taught you know sometimes you gotta play dead to get ahead and this is my personal experience in life so my very first job i was 15 years old and i got a job at the grocery store 
Okay. Uh, I have done a lot of customer service type of work, um, working for fast food restaurants such as Hardy's, McDonald's. Um, I worked Pizza Inn, Outback Steakhouse. I've had a lot of jobs in my lifetime, a lot, too many to name. Um, I, I've just been a server, fast food, hospitality, um, bartending, cocktail waitress. Uh, I've worked in retail. <laughs> um, I worked in labs, healthcare, group homes, urgent care settings, um, rehab, nursing facilities, hospice, the hospital, ICU. Yeah. And also I do spiritual consultation work. Basically I work for myself. That kind of give you a well-rounded, you know, ideal of my work experience. <sighs> These nine to five jobs. Oh, oh, oh. I also have worked like telemarketing, um, department of revenue. Yeah. Customer service over the phone, troubleshooting. <coughs> um, just thinking all the stuff I've done. So I work with the public. I work with what I say, human relations. I work with the public. Um, I, I can honestly say, and like I say, I've been working since I was 15. I don't really have issues with the people that I serve. You know what I'm saying? Like customers, patients, residents, things like that. I, 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 I don't typically have issues with the public or, you know, customer service because, you know, like my mom and, you know, instilled certain things in me. Like, you know, you here to do a job. You, you got to do it. You here... So basically, my ethics is like this. If I work, like if you're going to pay me, I'm going to do my job. So when it comes to doing my job, there's never an issue with me doing my job. You know what I'm saying? But the issues I have ran into on jobs was never with the public and customers. It's always with management and sometimes coworkers. Oh, yeah. So, really, again, a lot of times my issues can be with management. Sometimes it's personality clashes. Like, I'm not easily intimidated. And when you're not easily intimidated and you question things, especially when you know things ain't right, and, and you know, but everybody seemed to go along, go with the flow <laughs> and play dead to get ahead, Right? I ain't built like that. You know, I'm, I don't come in a workforce to be a rebel. I don't come in a workforce with the intentions of trying to like, like boss up on somebody as far as like trying to run shit or I'm not here to buck against the system. But when it comes to me and my, it's always it, it's a it's a matter of boundaries. You know what I'm saying? I could really write a book on the tactics and strategies that management really try to use to intimidate or get more work out of employees, the worker bees. Too many times and and no matter what the profession or the line of work, but too many times I've seen where upper management is benefiting that like they benefit big time off our hard work. 
And when it comes time for bonuses, they get the bonuses and they give the worker bees, the employees, pizza parties. Make it make sense, Lord. Fucking pizza parties. With no consideration that some people are allergic to gluten products and gluten ingredients and things like that. Everybody don't like pizza. But this is just a gesture. And really, let me tell y'all something. These pizza parties and, and drinks and all that shit that they be giving out and then little <laughs> pins and paraphernalia with the company logos on it, like they really doing us a favor. Dog, listen. <laughs> They got to write that shit off. You understand? So when it comes to payroll and budgeting and where the money is being allocated and stuff like that, they have to have an itemized something to go to show record. See, when it comes down to taxes and shit, see, they got to show record that a certain portion of money was spent on the employees and what better way to do it than to have some cold ass pizza get the fuck out of here um i recently left a job where i was working full time and had and i could get pto now different jobs got different things and see, they don't really take the time to break down and explain these things to you during the onboarding process. But, okay, they offered me PCO, right? And see, me, my ass, going through what I was going through, I worked a lot of overtime. So, I accumulated quite a bit of PTO. But after I left this company, I had learned that... <laughs> First of all, they say you got to be there two years to collect your PTO. And then check this out. In comparison to another job that I had, every, like, okay, so every time I pick up a shift, I got a certain amount of PTO. So every, every shift, every, listen, every shift that I picked up, I received a certain amount of PTO. Okay. When I left that job, I was there. I was at that particular job for a year. And when I left that job, I had, I had collected all of my PTO, right? Versus this job that I recently left, right? So I had only been there a couple of months, but in that couple of months, I had picked up a lot of shifts, a lot a lot of shifts, right? So that the the way they got this thing set up, so I guess it's like a certain period. Let's just say fiscal period. I'm not sure if this is the case, but I'm just kind of like guessing it. So in this fiscal period, um allotted a certain amount of PTO. And then this second part of the fiscal phase, I, I, you know, I collect a little bit more PTO. So then it's time to leave the job run. Like I need my PTO and they like, well, you have to be there at least two years to collect it. So to me, that's like you dangling a carrot in front of me. Like, yeah, go harder, go farther, go farther. So after two years, after my body's been broken down for picking up all these shifts because we're overworked and underpaid, and don't have the proper, you know, um, teamwork. You know, there's this thing called like a census, right? And like governing bodies like state boards, they come in and they will do their, their, uh, I don't know, uh, inspection, so to speak. Um... I was going somewhere with that, but it just totally skipped my mind. Um, anyway, I'm trying to break down how this whole job stuff work. Long story short, they don't make it crystal clear about what's what. You know what I'm saying? But let me tell you something about me. 
One thing my mama taught me is the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Whatever Lord means to you, but the creator or creatress, what's mine, I'm going to get one way or the other. I call all my energy back to me. But if I feel for people who don't have either the gift or the mindset to go and claim what's theirs. See, I earned that PTO. But you want to put your stipulations on this is how you earn money. You already underpaying me. And then I pick up. And, and that's they underpay you so you can pick up more hours. They want to run the machine. And the more hours you work, they're paying you a portion. But they're making it for every hour you work. They're actually making a certain amount of money off of you. Versus how much you're getting paid. Do you understand? So they want to lure you in by saying you can have PTO, right? <laughs> Only to say that you can't collect it because you haven't been there two years. That's bullshit. And see, companies that do stuff like that, y'all not going to last long because everything is shifting now. And see, I'm stepping into my newness. You understand? So for so long, I've, I've adopted this whole nine to five, let corporate America schedule my life. And I work accordingly and I'm steadily chasing the carrot dangled in front of me the whole time. They're benefiting. It's like they're, the, they're reaping the benefits in live time. While we sitting here chasing illusions, that's what these companies do. Y'all got hell to pay. These companies, these upper management people and their strategies and how they present it to people. Y'all got hell to pay. Like, I'm telling you, that's why I, this COVID thing really, in a sense, was a blessing in disguise because... Now, people, <laughs> these jobs is on, on, on the internet complaining about employees don't want to come to work and they're forced to shut the fuck down as you should. Y'all made enough money off of us. You hear me? Stuff like this is crimes against humanity. That's why I say play dead to get ahead my ass. That's why these millennials and, uh, and beyond is switching the whole game up. Thank God for technology. We don't have to be in narcissistic upper management's face front and center. Now, a lot of things can be done online that takes away your power. And most narcissistic assholes, especially in the boomers generation, they don't like the change, honey. They like to stick with what works. They have this work culture. Do you understand that they want you to follow, which I say is work discrimination because you can't tell me how to be on a job like you're trying to impede on my personality. That's a part of my spirit. That's a part of who I am. Right now, I know I'm not going to come to your job and draw a veve in the floor and do rituals and burn sage and shit. I, you know, that's a part of my personality. But what I mean is this. You can't tell me how to dress. You understand? That's wrong to tell people how to wear their hair. Now, I can understand a uniform going with the like business logo and the whole objective of the business. I can respect that wearing uniforms of certain colors and something like that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a uniform. We're a team. I get all of that. But when you try to tell me how to wear my hair, when you try to tell me... That I got to smile all the time when I'm used to having the resting bitch face. Now, dealing with customers, yeah, you want to be pleasant. But I shouldn't be forced to smile all the time. I'm a human having a human experience unapologetically. I don't know why I chose to eat this candy. But that shit good. Bought these by Starburst. Okay. Back to what I was saying. Work culture. P 
people really like we've been going along with this for so long discrimination because you got tattoos i think you know since the 90s i've seen that kind of fade off because i've seen doctors nurses real professional people with tattoos and shit piercings some jobs used to try to tell me to take my nose ring out no the fuck i'm not and not and show sure ain't you know what i'm saying because my nose ring is not gonna interfere with me and my skills i'm here to do a job i'm here to do a job my nose ring don't have shit to do with it you understand so i refuse to take my nose ring out it was certain things that i'm not gonna let a job you know like uh-uh no i feel like from the time we take our first breath we are really fighting for our souls and when i mean souls like okay i'm gonna give a quick example I have three children. They have three totally different personalities. Me and my oldest daughter with Libras. We got we got similar traits, but she very different from me. Then my two children, they're Virgos. My two youngest ones, they're Virgos, but they're totally totally different. With that being said, as me being a Libra mom, right? My son can be a little goofy at times. That might get on my nerves sometimes, but he has the right to be himself. So I can't to so for anybody or anything to try to like force you to change what naturally comes to you, as long as it's not like stepping on people's toes. And what I mean by that, not on some annoying shit, but more so like it's not stopping your livelihood or it's not impeding on, yeah, your livelihood. Who is you to be trying to change somebody, change somebody's personality and spirit? And every day, corporate America, people of authority try to chip away at who we are. And I look at my life, I'm 42 years old now. I've been fighting tooth and nail for my soul and with that being said you know i haven't in court i've been working since i was 15 years old now i haven't really been on one job for really over more than a year for the most part because again I'm not about, you're not going to make me be something that I'm not. And then when I don't play and when I don't let you pull my strings like a puppet. Oh, North Carolina is an at will state. So they fired you. Oh, well, but I tell you one thing. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had the struggle my whole life. But I refuse to sell my soul for a fucking job that underpays me. That don't pay me my worth. And another thing I had to learn that I'm trying to tell other people is this. Know your worth and add tax. It's good to do research. Don't just accept whatever a job offers you. Oh, we're paying this much. No, you got to learn how to interview and negotiate. This is an African proverb. They say that earth is the marketplace and heaven is our home, right? So we came here to shop. And it's like certain things we need, like certain lessons and things like that, that builds our spirit or our soul. So we basically here to shop. This is not our life. You can't make, when you make your job your life, you have sold your soul. Do you understand? Because what it's saying is that you alone as an individual lack an identity. So you identify with a company, but you have to stand alone as an individual. You got to like stand firm with your feet, 10 toes down, planet. 
of who the fuck you are. No matter how it may piss people off, you people may close the door in your face, avoid you, shun you, but you got to be true to yourself. You understand? You don't want to look back over your life resenting people who out here living their life to the fullest because you chose to feed the machine, corporate America, and that became your identity. And then you resent people who follow their own path. That shit ain't right. So that's why I said you can't play there to get ahead. So a few, a few things I realized about myself. Recently, I started studying my birth chart. That really gave me a lot of insight on how, how one, how my life has played out in the past. But then two, where it's going. And the thing is, the whole nine to five corporate America making a schedule, that shit didn't work for me. That's why I never really kept a job over a year because I needed something that was accommodating to me. And those places weren't it. See, sometimes it's just like, uh, -uh you got to move. And I had to keep going through this. I'm like, oh, my God, I, I just kept trying to make it happen with the whole nine to five thing. <laughs> And it took me to recently to realize that is not for you. That's why it don't work for you. You know what I'm saying? But I got to do something better than that. And that's like doing my own thing. Some of us are born, natural born leaders. But I was me. I was so busy trying to fit in being a follower. That's why that shit won't work it for me. You know what I'm saying? So now I have to create my own, which I've already done. And I'm, you know, but I got to really invest in time and all of that. And I want to encourage people to do the same. Like if corporate America ain't working for you, personality clashes, don't change who the fuck you are. You have a destiny bigger than corporate America. Fuck playing dead to get ahead. My black ass. Peace, y'all.